Hey friends! My name is Desiree, aka Mama Friendly, and I do all sorts of videos on my channel, from cooking videos to planner videos, vlogs, hauls, homeschool videos with a Disney twist, a little bit of everything. So if any of that sounds like fun to you, I hope that you'll subscribe and join me on my YouTube adventure. For the last couple of years, we've been doing Disney homeschool themed videos around Disney movies, characters, or rides. This year, I decided to change things up and we're still doing Disney themed homeschooling, but we're going to be centering our lessons around the Epcot World Showcase. I thought this would be a great theme to base our lessons on because it gives us so much opportunity for different branches of learning. Obviously, we're learning about geography. We're going to learn about each of the different countries' languages and traditions and culture, how people live there as opposed to how we live. So we've got social studies thrown in the mix as well. I'm, of course, throwing in a lot of life skills. So cooking has always been an important part of our homeschool series. And we're going to aim to create an authentic recipe every single time that has to do with the country or traditions that we're studying. And of course, from a sensory perspective, I love including art projects in our theming. So every video is going to include at least one or two different art projects. Something else to consider is that my child is on the autism spectrum. He has nonverbal autism. And so we're going to be tailoring the activities, obviously, to his level because he is the child that I am teaching. You can, of course, feel free to tailor these activities to whatever developmental or educational level makes sense for the kiddos that you're teaching. I'm gonna do my best to include resources and activities in a Pinterest board that pertains to each and every theme. So all of these videos are gonna have a Pinterest board linked in the description box so you could check it out. This will give you some ideas for activities that we didn't get to cover in the video or even ideas for taking the activities we did do and tweaking them to fit kiddos of different ages or different abilities. One big consideration that I wanted to make before jumping into this particular string of themed videos is that I wanted to make sure to approach this from a place of cultural appreciation and not appropriation. I want to be able to respect the people and the traditions of these countries without resorting to tropes. That being said, we're going to try to be as authentic as possible in all of our facts, in all of our art activities, especially in all of our recipes. I'm going to try my best to outsource this information from people native to the countries that we're studying wherever I'm able. So now that I've explained a little bit about what we're trying to do here, let's jump into the country for this month. Germany is also known as Deutschland. Their main language is German or Deutsch. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Their currency is the Euro and the capital city is Berlin. Germany has a ton of special holidays and events that they celebrate throughout the year all over the country, such as Unity Day in Berlin. They have Carnival in Cologne, which resembles the Brazilian Carnival a lot. And probably most famously is Oktoberfest in Munich. Anytime you think of maybe stereotypical German dress and people drinking beer, eating pretzels, eating sausages, it's probably because you have a vision of Oktoberfest in your mind. We're gonna look for Germany. I see France. Oh, here it is. Look, you see right there? I'll show you. It's this little green one here. Boop, Germany. It's kind of just small by comparison, but it's a pretty big country. As usual, our unit studies would not be complete without watching the Epcot Pavilion Tours that are hosted by 4KWDW on YouTube. As always, I'll have this video linked down below in a playlist where you can find all of the videos that I'm referencing and all of the information that we used as a resource for this unit study. So we are watching a tour of the Germany Pavilion and he's showing us the inside of the eateries. I don't believe there's any sort of video or any sort of attraction in here. It's just a matter of getting ambiance, getting some really yummy food. They have the best caramel and chocolate type treats in the Germany Pavilion. They also have this really delicious, I think it's called Mozart or something. It's like a chocolate liqueur that they have in one of the back shops. Obviously not for kiddos, but it's really, really tasty. Unfortunately, I don't believe it's dairy free. I haven't had it in 
quite a few years. But if you're able to eat dairy and you're over 21, definitely worth a try. In the Germany Pavilion, one of the things that you can do is a meet and greet with Snow White. She is the character that meets outside of the Germany Pavilion, somewhere between Norway and Germany, but closer to the Germany side. The reason for that is because Grimm of Grimm's Fairy Tales was German, and there's actually loads and loads of Disney kind of IPs that are based on Grimm's fairy tales. Snow White being one of them, but Rapunzel is a Grimm fairy tale, Cinderella is a Grimm fairy tale, but because of that, Snow White is considered a German story, a German character, and that's why they have her meeting in the Germany Pavilion. We did cover Snow White in our Disney homeschool series already. We did a gooseberry pie in that video, just like you see in the movie. We did a Snow White related art project. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I'll have it linked in the corner as well. And of course, it's going to be linked in the description box below. We're back with our global art book. I'll have the book linked down below as a resource in the description box. And one of the things that we've learned that Germans like to work with as far as an art is beeswax. So I actually went online and found a German company selling modeling beeswax. It was pretty inexpensive. I'll have it linked down below as well. As you can see, it's a bunch of different bricks and they're all multiple colors. And what you do with this is that you just warm it between your hands. It's quite pliable already, but the warmer it gets, the easier it is to work with. And you can use this kind of like Play-Doh to just mold and make whatever sorts of shapes you like. This is great from an occupational therapy perspective because you can work on a lot of hand strengthening here. There's a sensory textile element to it. Oh, it actually smells really nice too. There's a very subtle sort of clean, almost minty, but not quite mint. It's definitely like a leafy herbaceous scent though, which is not what I expected from beeswax. I kind of expected it to smell sweet like honey, to be honest, which I realize sounds pretty ignorant of me, but that's okay because we all learn something every day, right? But yeah, this is, uh, this is gonna be fun. And it's not like super squishy. There's a lot of firmness to it. So I don't think my son will mind this too much. While I was searching for that modeling beeswax though, I also found a bag of beeswax pastilles. So it's like little pellets. And it brings in here somewhere wicks as well. Oh, here we are. So I thought it would be fun also to kind of make our own candles with beeswax. And this is gonna be more of a hands-off activity from a texture perspective, but it's still going to provide input as far as we're gonna have to measure and pour. We're gonna listen to the beeswax hitting the jars. And I think that my son's really gonna enjoy this activity. Something else I found, <laughs> I kind of went down a rabbit hole here, but I found these honeycomb sheets with the wicks as well so that you can make candles this way too. You just kind of cut the sheets and mold them around the wick. I don't think we're gonna use these today though, but we will use them eventually. And so if this is something you'd prefer to use rather than the pellets, because maybe this is easier to clean up after or whatever, I'm gonna have this link down below as well. So we have some scissors here to cut our wick. I've got three jars, one's a little shorter, the other two are a little taller. And these are jars from Guy. The reason that I kept these in particular is because they have very wide mouths, but they're not super, super deep. And so I think that these are the perfect size for candles. If you actually have old candles that are burnt down, you can just clean those jars out and reuse them for this purpose. I also like that they have their lids, obviously, so we can put them away when we're done with them and we don't have to worry about the pellets spilling. I've also got a tablespoon measuring spoon here because it's the most like scoopy, sort of like deep spoon I could find. I felt like that might be a good idea as opposed to just letting my son pour, which he could do as well. Um, but it'll be a little less messy this way, so we'll see what he prefers. If he'd rather pour it, then that's fine with me, and we'll just sweep up after. Let's remove the wick from in here. So pretty much what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some of the wick. It's all like knotted up in here, so I need to release a little bit of it. 
I want to make it at least as deep as the jar plus a little more. So maybe, maybe something like this. So it's got about an extra three inches and we'll cut any excess. But I'm going to take this now. I'm going to wrap it around anything really. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use this pen because it's got a, this handle on it here so it'll be easy to just wrap it like that. I'm going to put the wick right here in the middle. Actually, I probably should have given it a little less slack. So Something like that so that the wick reaches the bottom without too much extra. And now that's going to hold our wick in place when my son pours the wax in here. You're going to take a spoon and put it in here. Good job. Oh, wow. Okay, you got it? Good work. Now you put it in this jar. Oh, or in that one. <laughs> That's okay. I think he sees the pen in the way and he's like, nope, too many obstacles. Actually, I kind of like that idea because this is the smaller jar. So if you want, you could pour some in here. Yeah. Go ahead and put it in there and then we can pour it into this one. Yeah, just like that. So you want to go like this? You could go, wee and pour them all in there. I like that idea. Here you go. The wax is actually a little sticky, so look what we can do. Let's take this whole thing and go like this. We're gonna fill this up. Can you pick it up? You got it? Oh, good job. Okay, now we're gonna take all this. You gotta hold it, silly. <laughs> here, take it, and we're gonna pour it in here. Ready? Whoa! Oops, that's okay. That's fine, because look, the bottle is so wide that now I can just go like this. <laughs> yeah! You like it? <laughs> so we're just going to keep filling that up like that so we can make... Ooh, you like this, huh? We're going to make more candles, sir. Look how cool this other stuff. See, Mommy's already worked on this one. Can you squish it? You want to squish it? Look, you got to go crunch. You see? You could fold it like this. Crunch. Do you like it? Yeah. Feels nice. Oh, good squishing it. Nice. Yeah, so you can you could make a snake or you can make a ball. You could do all sorts of stuff with this. Yeah, and we can cover the jars too. I always like to include documentaries in these videos to give you guys ideas of how to easily access more information about whatever country we're learning about. I found this channel called Bedtime History and they have a short video, it's less than eight minutes long, called The Berlin Wall for Kids. So it's kind of as kid friendly a version as you can get about the history of the Berlin Wall and it coming down. I cannot put it in a playlist because since it's meant for kids, YouTube doesn't allow you to do that. But I will have the link written out in the description box below so you can still click it and easily find it. Like I said, it's a super short video, but it's a nice age appropriate way to introduce your child to a real life historic event that happened in Germany. Alrighty, so we're going to make some Apfel von Kuchen. I know Kuchen is cake. Apparently Apfel is apple and Fankuchen means pancake, so pancake. So you put them together and you get Apfel Fankuchen. And this is a German recipe. As you can see, we're going to be using our cooking class global feast cookbook today. And I'll have this linked in the description box. I'm going to be making this, of course, gluten and dairy free because that's what everything is in our kitchen. But I'm going to be showing you the authentic way as well here. So you're going to need a cup of flour. This is the one that I'm using. I don't know if I have quite a cup in here, but that's fine. We have more in the pantry. You also need a teaspoon of baking powder and a half teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of salt, two eggs, a cup of milk, I'm using the Nut Podge Original Creamer. This is my go-to dairy substitute for all things cooking and baking. 
two tablespoons of vegetable oil. They also want you to have some butter for cooking. So I've got this Kite Hill plant-based butter. Again, this is my go-to for all things cooking and baking when it comes to dairy-free butter. And lastly, you need, it says two apples peeled, cored, and thinly sliced. This recipe makes three pancakes. I'm gonna try to get away with one, but I've got plenty more apples if I need them. And I've also got my handy dandy peeler, corer, slicer, etc. back here. It's out of focus, but it exists. There it is. I'll have that linked down below as well. I use that anytime I need to cook with apples and it's more than paid for itself at this point. So we're gonna take a large mixing bowl. We're gonna mix our dry ingredients together. So that was the cup of flour, the baking powder, the baking soda, cinnamon and salt. In a medium bowl, so a separate bowl, we're gonna get our wet ingredients together and that would be our two eggs, our cup of milk, our two tablespoons of oil. We're gonna mix this well. And once the eggs are completely combined into the milk and everything else, we're going to pour the wet stuff into the dry stuff and stir until it's smooth. Gonna melt a little bit of butter into a large skillet. I'm using a nonstick skillet over medium heat. We're gonna arrange the apple slices as cute as we can make them. And we're just gonna let them cook for about a minute just so that they start to soften up. We're gonna pour enough batter into the skillet to completely cover the apples. And when bubbles begin to appear on the surface of the pancake, we're going to do our best to lift it with a spatula and peek underneath. If it looks light brown, we're gonna flip it over. And when the other side starts to look tan, we can remove the pancake from the skillet. Serve the pancake with the apple side up so it's nice and cute. You can top this with whipped cream. We have this almond-based non-dairy whipped cream that's really good. You could also top it with applesauce, cinnamon sugar, whatever you'd like. How fun is this? Probably the only Christmas gift that my son actually specifically asked for was a xylophone. So when I went looking for a xylophone for him, the one I found that is actually not a toy, it's a perfectly tuned, proper instrument, but for kids, like this is meant to be a basic learning tool so that you can teach your children the concept of music and reading music and so on, is a glockenspiel which is a typical German instrument. So we're gonna open this up to show you the inside. See, it comes with a little label so that you can put it somewhere and um, keep track of what all of the keys mean. It's got, of course, our two little hammers here. And then every key, I'm not sure what else you're meant to call them, has a note stamped on it so you can keep track of what's what. But it's an actual proper, Glockenspiel, proper xylophone. So we've been having a lot of fun with this and we really love whenever we're able to explore a typical instrument from a country. I feel like it's a really fun way to dive into the culture of that country. And so if you and your kiddos want a glockenspiel of your own, I'm gonna have it linked down below, but this has been an absolute blast for us for the last couple weeks. All right, friends, that concludes our Germany-themed homeschool video. Our apple pancake recipe was so yummy and extremely simple to make, kid-friendly both in the cooking and in the eating. As far as our beeswax crafts, my son loved the candle making a lot more than I expected him to, which was a nice surprise. And speaking of surprises, the beeswax, the molding one, he is super into it. I actually keep a couple at our work table so that we can both use as fidgets while we're doing our therapies. And one of his favorite things is to have me stamp his hands with it. And he also really likes wearing them as bracelets. So like we'll roll out a snake and he'll put some beeswax on his arms. 
whatever works. I'm just excited that he's excited and I love that he's seeking out these opportunities for sort of like texture play because that's always been something where he's very defensive as far as sensory seeking. He loves pretty much every other sensory experience but texture has always been a tricky one. So to see him wanting to use these things is really, really great. We had a lot of fun with this unit study. I'm looking forward to the next one, which will be Italy. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And I would love to hear from you guys. If you do any or all of these activities with your kiddos, let me know how they go for you. I wanna thank you all so much for being here and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. See you real soon.